The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father. A mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. So when you think of uh, great baseball players throughout history, right, what are some of the names that may pop into our mind? Well, for me, it's a bunch of New York Yankees. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? But uh, if you think of the real old timers, you'll always hear names like uh, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. Everybody knows Babe Ruth. She even shook her head. And he hasn't played in over 75 years. I guess he made a great in, uh, impression uh, on a lot of people, not just in the game. Um, I know there's some great Phillies out there, right? Who are some of the great Phillies throughout history? Schmidt, yeah, Mike Schmidt, third base, right? Who else? There's gotta be more than one. I can name like 100 Yankees, I'm sorry. Who else has been a great Philly? John Cruck, oh, I remember him. I'm old enough to remember him. Yes, and Deacon Jerry, what about when you were growing up? Whoa, okay, okay. How many World Series? Okay. <laughs> we have 27, so, sorry. But you know what's a name that we usually don't think of and we actually should? Jackie Robinson, huh? I'm gonna share a little story with you about him, especially in light of today's gospel, huh? Jesus says he's gonna come and cause division. And that's not because he doesn't like people or love them. He absolutely does. What he's talking about is the truth, right? Some people are convicted and accept the truth. Others fight against it. That's why we have division. It's another word called uh, for causing division. It's called sin. I, I want to share with you and I want to argue to some extent that Jackie Robinson was not only one of the history's greatest baseball players, but I would also argue the most important, even more important than Ruth, Gehrig, and all the other Phillies that we mentioned. If you ever seen the movie 42 or you read any part about his life, uh, you know, uh, black folks in those days were not playing in baseball. They had their own leagues. And there was uh, the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Branch Rickey, himself a very faithful Christian man, uh, and he wanted to break that mold. He was a pioneer in that respect. So they were scouting Jack Robinson, who was an incredible athlete. I believe he was either from USC or UCLA. It was one of those schools. And he was a two-sport or a three-sport guy. Just incredible. And the other great thing about him, he was a beautiful human being. Also an incredible man, filled with faith, a family man, and that's the kind of man that Branch Rickey knew he would need to break the barriers. But he was going to put Jackie to an incredible test. So he calls him in and he's ready to sign him. He has him in the office. And, uh, you know, he's playing the whole owner part, right? Because he's, he's going to test this young man to see if he's going to have the grit, the determination, and the perseverance to be able to break through divisions and social and racial barriers and all the rest. So he begins talking to him and as he goes into the conversation, after they finish up, you know, the contract, the money and all the rest, he starts to say to him and ask him, how are you gonna handle the pressure? Now, Jackie obviously being a young man, he probably didn't think of any of that. 
he was just so excited that he was going to sign a contract with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Can you imagine being, you know, 20, 21 years old, Branch Ricky's calling you into the office. He's ready to sign you and you're going to be playing in the big leagues. So he probably wasn't really that concerned or even thought about the social impact. So this is where Branch Ricky begins to test him. And he says, what's going to happen? How are you going to react when people start calling you derogatory names? When people start threatening your life? When people start threatening your wife and your children? What are you going to do when people begin to spit on you from the stands? And then Branch Rickey, even himself, calls him a name right there in the office. And Jackie stands up and he's fired up and he says to him, are you asking me to be a coward? And Brad Tricky says, no, just the opposite. I'm asking you to be like our savior, Jesus Christ. Now, if you think about that one moment in time, in that incredible story, and what Jackie Robinson was able to do is incredible. Because I'm sure that day in the office, when Branch Ricky was putting him to the test, he could not see that one day his number would be retired from baseball. He also could not see that there'd be a day during the season where every single player wears his number, 42. But don't think for a minute that it was easy for him because as those couple of first seasons went on that's what people did to him they spat on him they sent him letters and threats they were threatening him from the stands even some of his own teammates would not accept him and there was one time where it came to a boiling point and he was ready to quit and he runs back into the clubhouse, he smashes the bat, and Branch Rickey follows in and says to him, what are you doing? He says, I've had enough. No human being should be put through this. Branch Rickey's response was, you know, our Savior fell three times. Any one of those times, he could have said, that's it, I've had enough. But when he was carrying the cross, he realized Jesus that he was carrying us and that he could not let go. Branch Rickey to the same effect as saying that to Jackie. You're carrying not just you, but a whole societal structure to try to bring down barriers. You have to get, you have to get your bat and go back out there. That scene in the film reminds me so much of Simeon helping Jesus carry the cross. So he's done amazing things. I bring up that story, why? Because we still have divisions now. Now, divisions have always existed and disunity. But I want you to think about this for a moment to understand what Jackie Robinson went through. Let's move now to our perspective. Let's say somebody says something a little sharp to you. Let's say somebody disagrees with you. Let's say somebody calls you a name or they put you in a defensive position. What's the first thing that we usually do? We respond back, right? Because we're not going to let anybody walk on us. And I always have to be right. So if somebody says something to me, I'm responding like this. It's not what Jackie Robinson did. If you watch that film, there are plenty of times, almost all the time, he remains quiet. There are many hard sayings of Jesus that are hard for us to accept. I have them in today's bulletin reflection. Today is one of them. There's also another hard saying of Jesus where he says, I don't say to you only love your family and friends, I want you to love your enemies. So when your enemy slaps you in the face, I want you to turn your face and let them slap you on the other side. <laughs> I can't even accept a sharp word, let alone if somebody slaps me. Right? Think about that. Jesus is tough, 
in that regard. Because he knows that to break the cycle of sin, it must be done with humility, peace, and love. Now, Jesus never says that you cannot defend yourself, right? We know a lot of the church fathers, even the apostles themselves, knew that defense of innocent people is actually something just. But the highest form of justice is humility. And Jesus shows that perfectly the night he was arrested. He even remained humble to the people who were falsely accusing him at least if he was truly guilty, you know, I could understand, but he was actually innocent and he still remained quiet. Look what Jesus did, changed the world. Look where we are today, right? With all Christian believers. Look where we are today in baseball, <laughs> right? With Jackie Robinson's, uh, you know, beautiful example of being Christ. So if we want to break down barriers, we want to be able to really truly love people. It starts, you know where first? In my house. <laughs> then with my extended family. Then with my friends and colleagues here in the congregation. But then to the whole world. Right? So, during the week, trust me, you're going to get plenty of opportunities to live out this tough gospel. But during the week, I want you to remember two, one number, 42, right? Try to be a little bit like Jackie Robinson. Try to be a little bit like Jesus Christ. God bless you.